So now that we are finally introduced to the Invincible Multiverse, we are finally getting to see many alternate versions of Invincible and it turns out most of them are actually evil. So in this video, we are going to take a look at all the alternate Invincible versions from the multiverse that we got to see in the comics during the Invincible War. So let's start with Alternate Mark 1. So in his dimension, Alternate Mark 1 was very familiar with Rex Splode and how his powers and equipment worked. On the second day of the Invincible War, the first Alternate Mark injured Bulletproof and severely injured Monster Girl before threatening to kill her and being attacked by Bulletproof again. The Alternate Mark then fought Rex Splode who sacrificed himself by converting his skeleton into a suicide bomb to kill the villain and save his teammates. The second Alternate Mark fought Kerr Dragon, Mighty Man 2, Angelica Murphy and Super Patriot on the second day. He knocked Mighty Man and Super Patriot down while Savage Dragon jumped on him. He then choked Savage Dragon and shoved him against a structure. But somehow, Savage Dragon killed Alternate Mark II, who was later converted into a Reaniman. The third Alternate Mark, before he was approached by Angstrom to participate in the Invincible War, killed the Atom Eve of his dimension. Then during the war, he fought the mainstream Atom Eve on the first day and told her he would kill her slowly. She escaped and reunited with the mainstream Invincible. Alternate Mark III next fought Jackie Estacado on the second day. Then Alternate Mark III would go lay waste to Paris by the third day before becoming stranded in an alternate dimension with the other seven alive Alternate Marks. The fourth Alternate Mark killed his mother in his dimension. Then his father destroyed his childhood house before he could kill his father. In the Invincible War, Alternate Mark IV fought Oliver Grayson on the first day and Oliver was convinced he could defeat the Alternate Mark. But the Alternate Mark told Oliver that if he kept saying that, he would eventually believe it and that he will have to earn the Omni-Man symbol on his chest. After fighting Oliver who escaped to his house, Alternate Mark IV laid waste to Sydney by the third day and met up with the other surviving Alternate Marks about his house. Alternate Mark IV confessed that he was happy to see his childhood home but he was then stranded in an alternate dimension with the others by Angstrom Levi. Fifth Alternate Mark was distinguishable by his mustache. We didn't get to see him do much and during the war he was killed by a female superhero on the second day and was later converted into a reaniman. The sixth Alternate Mark fought the Cyberforce who he was very familiar with before they disbanded in his dimension and eventually the mainstream Mark and Adam Eve who arrived later in the fight. During this, he critically injured Eve and was killed by the mainstream Mark who is shown bloody but not injured. After killing him, the mainstream Mark carries the injured Eve to hospital in order to save her life. The alternate Mark 7 explained that he killed his father in his dimension and his costume appeared to be similar to Omni-Man's. Alternate Mark 7 fought Shadowhawk and Madman on the second day of the war. While fighting them, he appeared to have full confidence in himself but alternate Mark 7 was strangled to death by Madman's yo-yo and was later converted into a Reaniman. The alternate Mark 8 was wearing a Viltrumite attire. He killed Spawn in his dimension and ironically fights him in New York City in the mainstream dimension on the first day. The alternate Mark threatens that he will kill Spawn again who merely poses to an imaginary audience. It's not shown if he kills Spawn or not but he then lays waste to a major city by the third day before being stranded in an alternate dimension with the seven other surviving alternate Marks. Later, he was killed and eaten by the Sinister Mark. The ninth alternate Mark was wearing Bulletproof's costume, the one Invincible rejected in the mainstream dimension. This alternate Mark would strangely not arrive until the second day as he is not shown in the start picture. When he does arrive, he goes to the Pentagon like another alternate Mark did the day before 
and he makes it to the White Room where he would be strangled and killed by the militarized Reanimen. After his death at the hands of Reanimen, he was actually not converted into a Reanimen because his body was too mutilated. The 10th alternate mark fought Sarah Pizzini on the second day. She would somehow manage to kill him, but not without him severely injuring her. The 11th alternate mark was distinguishable by his veiny head. Alternate Mark 11 was in a Viltrumite prison for nearly a year in his dimension. He would vow revenge on his father and fly through the Kremlin at the same time on the first day. By the third day, he would lay waste to Moscow and his costume was somewhat torn. Then, just like the others, he got stranded in an alternate dimension where he was killed and eaten by Sinister Mark. The alternate Mark 12 fought and easily defeated the Guardians of the Globe on the second day, who were not as strong and respected as in his dimension. He would injure Black Samson, Shapesmith and Darkwing. He would then kill many of Duplicate's duplicates and decapitate the immortal to throw his head into a duplicate's body. Darkwing would then sacrifice himself and take the alternate Mark into the Shadowverse in order to save his teammates. While there, Alternate Mark 12 was probably killed by the monsters or other beings of darkness, and the Darkwing managed to survive but got himself trapped in the Shadowverse. The Alternate Mark 13 was wearing a flaxen attire. On the first day, he attacked the Pentagon and was killed by Brit and Donald Ferguson. Cecil Stedman broke his arm and got a bloody nose while the duo fought him. Like some other alternate marks, he was also converted into a reaniman. The alternate Mark 15 revealed that he does not have a version of Tech Jacket in his dimension, and when he came to the mainstream dimension, he ironically fought him on the first day. He was caught off guard by Tech Jacket's power, and eventually, alternate Mark 15 is killed by him. Next is the alternate Mark 17. He was one of the many alternate marks who ran an empire in their respective dimensions. He was recruited by Angstrom Levi to take place in the Invincible War. Alternate Mark 17 accepted and arrived on the first day. On that first day, Alternate Mark 17 would go to London and fight Jackstaff while he set Big Ben on fire. On the second day, Jackstaff would want a rematch and jab him with his staff. Later, he punched Jackstaff in the jaw, attempting to kill him, but instead, rendering him unconscious. By the third day, Alternate Mark 17 would lay waste to London before being stranded in another dimension and dying there. 18th Alternate Mark would strangely not arrive until the second day. When he does arrive, he would fight Pitt. This version of Mark managed to severely injure Pitt, but Pitt would kill Alternate Mark 18 in the air by jamming his thumbs into his eyes and head, mutilating the inside of it. Pitt would fall with the body of Alternate Mark 18 and was left unconscious upon landing. So someone killed Sinister Mark's mother in his childhood house in his dimension, which is what most likely turned him evil. Besides that, people in his dimension are more evil than usual. For instance, the Duncan Roseblatt or Firebreather of his dimension is known as the king of all monsters and was one of the most ferocious villains Sinister Mark has ever faced. He also does not have a version of Oliver Grayson in his dimension. Sinister Mark soon became the most horrible being in his entire dimension, eventually creating an empire and developing a liking towards cannibalism and human flesh while looking for more ways to torture his enemies. Meanwhile, Angstrom Levi fought against the Invisible from Main Universe and he was beaten to a near-death state by him. However, Angstrom managed to survive and after getting patched up, he started traveling to different dimensions in order to gather alternate evil versions of Invincible to fight. So, Sinister Mark was eventually approached by Angstrom Levi who said he would help him expand his empire into countless dimensions if he took place in his master plan and fought for him in the Invincible War. 
Sinister Mark accepted and led the charge into the mainstream dimension with 15 other alternate marks on the first day of the war and noted how evil they all were. Sinister Mark would go to Nevada on the first day and fight the mainstream Firebreather who is not as strong or evil here. After defeating him easily, Sinister Mark would go to his childhood home in the mainstream dimension on the second day. He was looking for his mother, who he now despises. Instead of his mother, he runs into Oliver Grayson and fights him and realizes that he is a lesser Viltramite and cannot possibly defeat him. He thinks about killing him, but Sinister Mark surprisingly lets Oliver live and leaves. Sinister Mark does not know where else his mother would be in this dimension, so he gives up that pursuit. Later, he would lay waste to a major city by the third day and meet up with the other seven surviving alternate Marks above his childhood home in the mainstream dimension. Sinister Mark would admit that he still hated coming back to his childhood home in any dimension because of what happened there in his dimension. Soon, Angstrom Levi arrives and tells them that the entire war was Phase 1 and Phase 2 would entail the remaining alternate Marks bringing the mainstream Mark to Angstrom so that they could punish him. But instead of following his orders, Sinister Mark tells Angstrom off. He points out that there are only 8 remaining alternate Marks left from the 19 that there were when this started. He also points out that the mainstream dimension is in shambles and that they should move on to a new dimension or kill Angstrom. Hearing this angers Angstrom and results in him being banished to an alternate dimension by Angstrom without food or water, followed by the seven other alternate marks. One of those seven was Mohawk Mark. Sinister Mark shouts that they cannot be contained and he vows to find a way out of there and kill Angstrom. The eight of them talked a lot while stranded, mostly about what turned them evil. Weeks passed and the seven of them realized that the eighth one was a jerk. So because they were starving to death, they all ate him. Mohawk Mark flew away, but the other six alternate Marks ate each other until only Sinister Mark and two other alternate Marks remained. Then, Alternate Mark 8 and Sinister Mark ate Alternate Mark 17 and Sinister Mark remembered how he would sometimes resort to cannibalism in his dimension and that he liked the taste of human flesh. Meanwhile, he has grown really long hair and a short beard. Soon, Sinister Mark would go insane and find and attempt to eat Mohawk Mark, but Mohawk Mark escaped. Finally, Sinister Mark turned on Alternate Mark 8 and killed him. While Sinister Mark was eating him, the mainstream Mark would be banished into that alternate dimension as well. The mainstream Mark, confused, would approach Sinister Mark who was eating Alternate Mark 8 next to five other skeletons. Sinister Mark would invite the mainstream Mark to eat Alternate Mark 8 with him admitting that there is a lot of Thai left. He just started eating him because he recently killed him and how the Thai is the best part. Sinister Mark says that he thought Alternate Mark 8 was the last one while forgetting about Mohawk Mark but says how he forgot about the mainstream Mark who he believed was one of the seven stranded with him. As the mainstream Mark realizes who Sinister Mark is Sinister Mark says that he cannot believe that the alternate Marks thought that Sinister Mark planned the cannibalism because he did not believe that he would be the last one to survive. Sinister Mark reveals how desperate and starving the alternate Marks were after a few weeks and how the first one they ate was the worst of them all. Then, Sinister Mark starts to question if the mainstream Mark is real or if they ate him already. But by grabbing him, Sinister Mark determines that the mainstream Mark is real and has been stranded only recently. The mainstream Mark punches Sinister Mark away, who says how his hunger never goes away, but also that he is bored. He thanks the mainstream Mark for putting up a fight and proclaims that the winner shall eat the loser and the alternate Mark 8's body. 
the mainstream Mark tells him how he could help him get back to sinister Mark's home dimension. But he ignores the comment and says that the alternate Marks did not get weaker as they got more hungry and that the mainstream Mark is weak from not being stranded for weeks. The mainstream Mark protests that he only wants to help and sinister Mark reveals that the only way he can help him is if he lets him eat him. The mainstream Mark then attempts to fly faster than him to get away with sinister Mark in pursuit. But eventually, Sinister Mark starts to tell him that what he had to do in order to survive has made himself the stronger one. But just then, out of nowhere, Mohawk Mark arrives and slams Sinister Mark away. Mohawk Mark and the mainstream Mark fly away and talk, but soon Sinister Mark finds them. Without even noticing Mohawk Mark, Sinister Mark grabs onto the mainstream Mark who knocks him away and tells him how he now has a partner. At that moment, Mohawk Mark flies with Sinister Mark into the ground and pummels him repeatedly. Mohawk Mark shouts how they could have found a way out of the alternate dimension together but Sinister Mark turned them against each other and was the worst of them. Mohawk Mark then continuously beats Sinister Mark to death. The mainstream Mark tried to stop Mohawk Mark but it was too late. Mohawk Mark celebrates as he finally managed to kill Sinister Mark, Mohawk Mark. His name definitely suits him because unlike other variants of Mark Grayson, this one is distinguished by his unique Mohawk. In his dimension, things were almost identical to the main dimension. Mohawk Mark and Adam Eve had grown close after Rex cheated on her with Kate. However, there was something off about Mohawk Mark, like he was just not entirely human. He didn't see things the same way others did. There were little things, but the teen team members mostly ignored them, thinking that he was just being weird. But what actually happened was, Mohawk Mark realized how different he was from the people of his planet and how stupid it was for him to waste any time protecting them and fighting them without getting anything in return. He realized that the people of Earth could be worshipping him. Then, just like in the original dimension, Omni-Man told him about the Viltrumites and their plan of taking over Earth. This Mark always had a different mindset, so Omni-Man successfully enlisted him and Mohawk Mark actually thought the teen team would also help him take over the planet. Eve actually considered it, but after he killed Rex, whom she was no longer in love with but very close with, she fought him. Seeing no other way in front of him, Mohawk Mark then killed Adam Eve, Kate and who he thought was Robot because he and everyone else were unaware that Robot was not just a robot. Next, Mohawk Mark went to the Mauler twins of his dimension and tore off the head of the one with the nose ring before they could talk. Mohawk Mark also destroyed the remaining Mauler's cloning equipment which stopped him from cloning himself again. Finally, a chain of events transpired in which everyone probably found out that Omni-Man and Invincible were direct descendants of their Emperor and were rightful rulers of planet Viltrum and the Viltrumites. But after a long chain of events, Omni-Man, Thedas and Thula were killed and Mohawk Mark was appointed the new Emperor of the Viltrumites. Thrag was cast out and led a rebellion against Mohawk Mark and his new Viltrum Empire. Because he was not a superhero in this dimension, he never fought or killed Conquest. Now that he was the Emperor of the Viltrumites, he took over the Earth easily with the Viltrumites' help and set up their high-tech power center Citadel in the Pentagon. Their General Crag was appointed to oversee the Science Commission with Earth scientists they likely enslaved. Conquest became the main sentry for the planet and Anissa and Lucan were assigned other lead roles. Meanwhile, the Viltrumite forces continued to hunt the remaining Mauler at every turn and prevented him from cloning himself again. The remaining Mauler was not able to rebuild his equipment or find a place to be alone with his work. However, when he saw the governments of the world overthrown and saw one power trying to manage the planet and not working, he saw the error of their ways and wanted to stop them and restore order. 
Also, Monster Girl never met Robot, who never found a cure for her reverse aging, so she digressed into an infant and became an even stronger and larger but most sleepy monster when she transformed. Most of Earth's citizens who still lived knew it as the monster and the Viltrumites captured it. It became a weapon of mass destruction for the Viltrumites and whenever the Viltrumites unleashed the beast, it was difficult even for them to contain it. It was around this time when Angstrom Levi arrived in Mohawk Mark's dimension and offered him assistance in expanding his empire to other dimensions if he fought from his side in the Invincible War. Mohawk Mark accepted his offer and decided to participate in the Invincible War. So, on the first day, Mohawk Mark destroyed part of Stronghold Penitentiary with ease and was surprised at how low-tech it is. Soon, original Mark came to battle him and they turned out to be evenly matched in strength. But when mainstream Mark smashed his fist against the Mohawk Mark's temples, he rendered Mohawk Mark temporarily unconscious. But he did not stay down for a long time as he soon recovered and flew through a building on the second day and laid waste to New York City by the third day. But later, when Angstrom Levi came, he was also teleported into another dimension with the seven other surviving alternate marks. One of those seven was also the sinister mark. So while they were figuring a way to escape, the eight of them talked a lot, mostly about what turned them evil. Weeks passed and the seven of them realized that the eighth one was a jerk. So because they were starving to death, they all ate him. It was him or them, and Mohawk Mark hated him so much, he almost did not want to eat him. Mohawk Mark decided not to eat any of them, because he thought cannibalism is horrible, and left, and had to drink his own sweat and other stuff to survive. During this time, he also grew a mini goatee. The other six alternate marks ate each other until only Sinister Mark, alternate Mark 8, and alternate Mark 17 remained. Soon, Sinister Mark would go insane and find and attempt to eat Mohawk Mark, but Mohawk Mark managed to somehow escape. Later, the mainstream Mark was also teleported into that dimension with Mohawk Mark and Sinister Mark. Mainstream Mark saw that the Sinister Mark had killed and eaten alternate Mark 17 with alternate Mark 8 and killed and was now eating alternate Mark 8. Sinister Mark then tries to attack and eat the mainstream Mark, but Mohawk Mark saw the mainstream Mark being attacked by Sinister Mark and not knowing who he was due to the new costume, slammed Sinister Mark away and flew away with mainstream Mark. Mohawk Mark would tell the mainstream Mark that they should work together to stop Sinister Mark from eating them both. While flying, Mohawk Mark talks to the mainstream Mark a lot and confesses that it is really nice to be able to do so. He then helped the mainstream Mark fight Sinister Mark and during their fight, he pummeled him until Sinister Mark died. Mohawk Mark shouted at the dead Sinister Mark how he made him eat another person and how he planned the cannibalism by turning the alternate Marks against each other. The mainstream Mark tried to stop Mohawk Mark but it was too late and just then, Angstrom Levi opened up a portal back to the mainstream dimension. The mainstream Mark would instantly spot it and return home, but there he was trapped by Angstrom. Mohawk Mark then also re-entered the mainstream dimension and fought Angstrom until the mainstream Mark reminded him that he cannot return Mohawk Mark home if he is dead. Then, Angstrom traps Mohawk Mark Angstrom then explains that he has a change of heart and apologizes to the mainstream Mark for everything he has done before letting them both go. He opens up a portal to Mohawk Mark's dimension, but Mohawk Mark thought something and pulled Angstrom in with him before the portal closed. Mohawk Mark then tortured Angstrom so that he would fulfill his promise of giving him access to other dimensions he could conquer and could add to his empire. Angstrom would refuse due to his newfound responsibility of doing the good he originally set out to do before his accident. So instead, Mohawk Mark decided to have his scientists cut the power out of Angstrom 
while keeping him alive until that is accomplished. Meanwhile, Mohawk Mark would shave off his mini goatee. He also started to miss Adam Eve, so he would hire cosplaying prostitutes with ginger mohawks to live in his personal chambers dressed up like her. He also realized how terrible the majority of his alternate dimensional counterparts were. Then, some more time passed. And eventually, the original mainstream Mark had the mainstream robot figure out how to visit Mohawk Mark's dimension and rescue Angstrom Levi. When they enter his dimension, Conquest would bring them down to Mohawk Mark's personal chambers, believing they are negotiators from Thrag's rebels. However, Mohawk Mark recognizes the mainstream Mark from his last visit to the mainstream dimension and asks Conquest to leave. The mainstream Mark is uncomfortable with the prostitute Atom Eves, and Mohawk Mark simply tells him that in his dimension she died and he needed to fill the void. However, he is still grateful towards the mainstream Mark for providing his escape from the alternate dimension where Angstrom trapped him. The mainstream Mark asks about Angstrom, which Mohawk Mark understands and says that he had it taken care of, but also knows that the mainstream Mark still does not trust him. So, he shows the mainstream Mark and robot where his scientists are holding Angstrom and explains that he is only keeping Angstrom alive until his scientists succeed in extracting his powers. The mainstream Mark is horrified, which confuses Mohawk Mark, who thought that from what the mainstream Mark said, he was going to make sure Angstrom was dead or kill him himself. The conflicted mainstream Mark admits that he was not going to torture Angstrom if he was still alive. Mohawk Mark tells the mainstream Mark how if something would turn him evil, he could rule his world. Robot then realizes how the mainstream Mark could foil his plans and he sees the opportunity to activate a sonic pulse which is lethal to Biltramites and makes both Mohawk Mark and mainstream Mark cringe. The mainstream robot kills Mohawk Mark's scientists so there are no witnesses and then fires a bomb into Mohawk Mark's mouth. It burrows into Mohawk Mark's esophagus and because his insides are somewhat more vulnerable than his outsides, when it explodes, it blasts out his eyeballs and causes his internal organs to burst in his throat. This, of course, kills Mohawk Mark and then the mainstream robot proceeds to kill Angstrom Levi himself and strand the mainstream Mark in Mohawk Mark's dimension. So other than these guys, we also got to see some other versions of Mark, but we didn't get to see them doing anything. So it's possible that almost all of them were killed off screen, and then later, many of them were converted into Reanimen by D.A. Sinclair. However, it's very much possible that when this war gets animated, we might get to see some totally new and different alternate Marks. But for now, these are all the alternate versions who we briefly saw. So yeah, that's all for this video and thanks for watching.